Hi, my name is Debbie Naylor. My blog is UnforgettableStamping.com and today I'm going to be sharing with you this quick and easy uh, thank you card. Now, um, if you've watched a couple of my past videos, you'll know how much I love the Fresh Prints Designer Stack paper and it's no longer available, but what I did do is draw inspiration from those colors and I created my own paper today. So I'm going to show you how to make this fun and easy background using a stamp set and several of your favorite colors together and also how to put together a really simple quick and easy card. So let's get started. Okay, so today's card starts with these um, note card and envelope sets that Stampin' Up! carries. There comes, uh, you get 20 in a pack. They're pre-scored um, and you get 20 envelopes. Now, this year they've added a crumb cakes offering. So you get crumb cake set or you can get a Whisper White. Today I'm working with the Whisper White. So I wanted to show you really quickly, um, Work of Art is a brand new stamp set that I absolutely love and it is, um, you get quite a few images here and what I did was I mixed and matched and uh, made my own designer paper and I wanted to show you some of the other samples that I have besides the one that I posted on my blog today. So um, using the For You stamp set, which has hello, thank you, birthday wishes, and thinking of you, um, along with the work of art stamp set, I came up with this card. This is a thinking of you, my little heart from the itty bitty punch pack set. Um, and then here's a hello card. Again, I'm just using the same um, stamp set work of art, but you can tell they're all a little bit different. And then here's a birthday card that I made. So if you see them all together, they really are a lot of fun. And, um, you know, some of them I stamped full strength, some of them I, I offset. So I'm going to show you how I did that with my thank you card. Okay, so again, we're going to start with the note card. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's scored right in the center. I'm just going to take my bone folder and just quickly give that fold a nice there. I'm going to set that aside. And then next I'm going to create my designer um, background. So I'm going to take my stamp set. Now this particular stamp set, if you get it in the wood mount, it really fits in. It's really hard to get open here. It really just fits in one way. It's got, I'm probably going to just scan it and stick a piece of paper in here um, showing how I get it back in. But um, it, it really does. It only fits back in one way. So um, I, sh I just want to share with you, this is how it goes in. Um, again, something that you might want to do for yourself is scan it. If you have a scanner, just lay the stamp set with all the images showing um, on the scanner and then cut it out and put it inside so you know exactly how these go back in. But I'm going to start with um, this little paint swatch. I'm also going to include this heart and the little circle dot. And so I always like to start with my largest image. It seems to work the best when um, you're trying to fill up a piece of paper. Now I'm only working with the small piece here that I'm going for my card. You could certainly work with an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock, stamp the whole thing and then cut it down and use it just like you would designer paper. So for this one, I didn't want my brush stroke to be so dark. So what I'm gonna do is stamp it off once and then I'm going to come across the paper like that. Again, I'm going to stamp off and I'm just filling in the paper again, stamping off just like that. Okay, and now that we've done that one, I'm going to go through my next largest image is my heart. And this particular one, I'm going to go full strength. On some of the other papers that I used, I stamped off the hearts as well, but I think I like that strong red image. So again, just stamp. Now, when you're doing a piece of paper like this and you're trying to make it look like it's, you know, a piece of designer paper that you cut yourself, it's best not to try to cram everything onto the piece of paper. Stamp off the edge there so it looks like you got it from a larger piece of designer paper. It just makes it look a little more realistic. Um, okay. I tend to not randomly stamp very well, so sometimes it helps me if I rotate it a little bit to kind of see a place where I may have missed. And um, I think I'm gonna put something right there. It's probably gonna be covered up, but part of it may show from underneath the cardstock. So there we go. Okay, now the last thing I'm gonna do is add my little dot. 
I'm using Coastal Cabana for that one. And this one I'm going to use several generations of the same stamp. So I'm going to stamp it full strength and then I'm going to stamp it second generation and even third generation just like that without re-inking it. Again, several and all over to fill up your space there. Just like that. Okay. So now we can move on to the next step. So that's how you create your designer paper. And you can make it as large or as small as you want. I just decided to make it with this one piece, but you could certainly do that um, with a larger one. And actually, I think, looking at it now, I want to add a little bit more of this crumb cake down here in the corner. And that's the beauty of this. You're just layering on top. So there, I can do it just like that. Okay, moving on. Um, if you noticed in my completed card, I had two little flowers, this little pansy punch. This is part of the new little trio called Itty Bitty Punch, or Itty Bitty Accents Punch Pack. So you get a cute little heart, a star, and this pansy. So I'm going to actually, when you put the card together, the red mat is going to be sandwiched between the card base and the top. So I'm actually going to take these right out of the center here. And if I push my punch up as far as it'll go, it is not going to show. So you can even do a lot. Uh, I'm just going to do the two that I need for this particular card. I'm going to set those aside here. But that's why I always wait to glue everything last. Because look, now you can't even see it. No one will even know that you took it. And you know for sure that the flowers are going to match your cardstock because you took it from the same piece. All right, I'm going to quickly add. Now, when you get these packs, here's another little tip. There's a little cello resealable flap here on the envelope. Most people would probably just want to keep that and pull it off and put it back on. But you know what? If you do that, you run the risk when you pull this out of having that little strip um, of adhesive on the flap stick to your rhinestones. So I just actually just cut it right off and pull that off. If you slide it in and out, it's going to protect your rhinestones. Okay, the easiest way I have found to pull the rhinestones off of this pack is to use a pair of snips because you want to make sure that you get that adhesive up. So I'm just going to pick it up and put it right in the center of your pansy. Do this one. And then I just like to curl. Just pull up the leaves just a little bit to give it some dimension. Okay, now we're going to set those little guys aside. Now the next thing I'm going to do is stamp my sentiment. And um, Soft Suede is a great darker um, shade of the crumb cake. So whenever I do sentiments um, when I'm using crumb cake, I always like to use the Soft Suede. It just makes it stand out a little bit better. And so for this particular card, I'm going to use thank you because I tend to send a lot of thank you cards. And so this is a nice one to have on hand. So I'm just going to ink that up. And I cut my Whisper White the same size as my block. And that way, as long as I centered this correctly when I put the stamp together, it's going to be really easy to stamp. So, okay, I went a little low, but that's okay. I'll just make the adjustments when I add my flowers. That's the beauty of stamping. It doesn't have to be perfect to look good. Alrighty, so now I'm going to put this all together. I'm just going to add my Tombow to the outside edges of the Whisper White. Now my other card, I did kind of put it at an angle. I think on this one, I'm just going to leave it like this. And then I'm going to add my little flowers in the upper corners to adjust for the fact that I stamped that sentiment a little low. No one's ever going to know. Well, except for you. <laughs> but when you send a card to someone, if you've got an original that you're working off of and you make a mistake, no one's going to know. They're just going to be happy to get that hand stamped card in the mail. So there, that looks great, right? Okay, so now let's finish putting it all together while that glue sets. I'm going to put my layers together. So starting with my real red cardstock. Alrighty. And we'll 
add the next layer. Again, this is a card that would be really easy to mass produce. I did four of them in no time when I was playing around getting the idea for this card together. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do is add some dimensionals to the back. And there we go. Easy peasy. Um, while you're stamping your background page, I do like to stamp my envelope. So again, I just pulled in some of the same images that I used on the card background. And then whoever gets it's going to know that something fun and pretty is inside. If you'd like to get all of the dimensions and supplies used with today's card, be sure to check out my blog. Um, I'll have the cards listed there uh, or shown there. In order to get the supply list, you do need to um, subscribe to my newsletter. I will be sending that newsletter out shortly with the step-by-step -step instruction sheet attached. If you are not a current subscriber and you'd like to get this, please subscribe and then shoot me an email. Uh, my email information is on my blog and I'll be happy to forward that to you. I thank you for watching my video and I hope you check back next week when I share another quick and easy project with you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.